Morning, everyone. Morning. Good to see you this morning. Very welcome, every one of you. If you're visiting with us, I see we have a, a few visitors this morning. So it's good to have you here, uh, particularly this morning. And uh, uh, I know some of our own folks are away enjoying the bank holiday freedoms this weekend. So um, good to have each and every one of you here. Quite a few things just to run through by way of announcement this morning. Um, so. Uh, let me just do that. First of all, um, uh, we had our harvest last week, so I was going to, to thank everyone who did the decoration, did the, the tidying up, and also um, brought the food for um, uh, the donations that we make to St. Vincent de Paul. And we've just a wee letter here from uh, the President, Frank O'Donnell. On behalf of the Society of St. Vincent de Paul, I want to acknowledge the Presbyterian Church's generous donation of groceries which for, for the harvest 2021. The past 18 months have been particularly challenging for people in our community living very much from hand to mouth. We're so grateful to people like yourself who've stepped up to help. Many thanks for your kindness and generosity. So um, consider yourself thanked for all the harvest gifts last week. Um, the Friendship Club meet again on Friday. No sooner harvest than where you see the Christmas shoe boxes. Friday 10.30, complete the shoe boxes any outstanding shoe boxes or items need to be here this Friday as the boxes will be packed and made ready for transport. So that's this Friday to finish that up at 10.30. Thursday evening we'll have our prayer service back again. Um, the same format in here at 8 o'clock or on the Facebook page as well, live at 8 o'clock. Faith Mission Rally in the Methodist Church on Tuesday night at 8 o'clock. Anyone interested in catching up with Faith Mission News? Faith Mission Rally Tuesday, 8 o'clock in the Methodist Church. Next Sunday, I'm away in Lake Patrick and Dodahidi, taking the services there. So Oscar Spence will be with you next Sunday morning again. And then the following Sunday is Communion Sunday. So just to to remind you of that, um, two weeks today will be Communion Sunday. Um, just looking ahead, um, I've uh, planned a couple of things for November. M muddy Church, we had one Muddy Church, we're going to have another one on uh, the 6th of November, so that's Saturday week. Um, and Rebecca and me have decided we're going to the beach this time, not right Rebecca? Yeah, so... Not the forest, but we'll do the beach this time, I think. So more details of Muddy Church on the 6th. Um, young adults, we're hoping to have an event on the, in the town here on the 13th. Again, Saturday evening, Saturday the 13th. Um, again, we're waiting to see what we can and can't do at that stage. So um, more details will follow, just so you know the dates. Young adults, we're talking sort of 16 plus, that, that, that kind of age range upwards. Um, yeah, I mentioned sort of depending on what we can do. Regulation changes, um, we, we all know last week was, uh, or this week past was meant to be a lot of changes brought in. Um, uh, we are still unclear what exactly that means for churches. I uh, got an email just late last night from the clerk of assembly saying they're still trying to chase down guidelines. Um, there's obviously some changes, but um, what those are and how those work out in practice, um, they still haven't got straightforward answers. Um, so um, uh, at the minute, we will just keep things as they are. And uh, if changes are allowed and permissible, then uh, session, I'll, I'll talk about that and introduce them over the next few weeks. But um, the reality is, I don't think huge amounts of things are, are going to change, but there may be some, some changes. Just check, that's everything I think that is. It's interesting, we used to have these long lists of announcements and then for a year and a half there was absolutely nothing. So now we're getting back up to, to some activities again. So it's, uh, it's great to be able to, to look forward to, to some more things uh, ahead for us. But we come uh, not looking forward to just what's ahead, but we come this morning to focus on what we're doing here together. We come to worship Jesus to celebrate Christ and our salvation. We have uh
Let's all join together in prayer. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that as we gather this morning, we can celebrate Jesus alive and ruling and reigning in our lives, in this building, in our land and in this world and throughout this whole universe. We thank you that we have a risen Saviour. Because of him, we have hope and confidence Hope and confidence today as we come to worship, knowing that we can draw right in to your holy presence through the access won and gained for us by Jesus. We come with with confidence and hope, not just for today and, and knowing you today, but for knowing that our lives are held in your hands today, tomorrow, in this week ahead and forever. We can draw to you today with hope and confidence in the face of darkness and often despair in this world and and, uh, the feeling of bad news that surrounds us so often. We thank you that as your people we have hope and confidence in Jesus. That because he lives, we can face today and tomorrow and forever. Father, we come this morning delighting in Jesus the saviour of the world, the one who brought the good news of your life and your presence to us. And as we gather this morning, we simply long and desire to be with you, to know you here among us, to share in your life together. So Father, as we look back to the week that's passed, we thank you for bringing us Through all the ups and downs, we thank you for giving us these moments together this morning. And Father, as we look to the week ahead, we pray that you would fill us with your life and presence this morning to equip us, enable us to serve you. And we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. We've been doing our five minute focus. We're going to have five minutes from the, the mission committee and Janice is going to, to do that. Yeah. Well, thank you. Um, the mission committee continued to meet even in the midst of COVID. We met a couple of times over the last 18 months and allocated funds. Um, can we just say on behalf of the mission committee and I suppose the you know, the leadership of the church to find a church for the giving, um, despite the fact that the church was closed for quite a significant period of time in 2020, the giving was the same, so we really thank you for that. So we allocate out the money accordingly, really, to these organisations up here, but I'll tell you the rationale behind them now. We wanted to have a to a few organisations, yet these organisations be broadly representative um, of the work of the church. So. Uh, we have the work of Asia Link um, and SAT7, which would represent really the persecuted church. Asia Link is obviously in, in Asia, and SAT7 works across uh, the Arab world, really, um, North Africa and the Middle East. It would be a broadcast company or, or organisation broadcasting into the homes. Um, we also want to represent youth work, um, youth work being your CEF there on the, the screen, local, local work. And also Genesis, uh, Genesis at night. So Genesis at night meets in Letterkenny. Um, it's an organisation, uh, Shorty and Austin are uh, the two local guys. Um, and a lot of our young people would go through this organisation, so we are very grateful for their work. Tia McGrath, I mean, if you know her, a um, lovely young girl from the town here, she's just taken up a post with them. Um, so that's, that's a very much a local organisation which we're grateful for. And then I suppose going on to support services, that would be your MAF Mission Aviation Fellowship. Um, it would work mainly in Africa um, and that would be involved in uh, you know, healthcare, delivering emergency equipment and work to, uh, to people and uh, supporting the missions on the ground. And then I suppose overarching all of that, or I suppose underpinning all of that really is your work with your Bible translators, going by the belief that if we can get Bibles into people's hands and they read them, and then God will speak through that. 
So uh, we continue to allocate money really to these organisations and we've done that a couple of times as I say and we thank you very much uh, for that. So we'll just pray now for uh, the work of mission uh, throughout the world. Father, we just thank you for the opportunity to be supportive of the wider uh, work of the church and uh, giving us the opportunity to support work throughout the Arab world and the Middle East, North Africa, Africa, Asia, and really just be far reaching in our attempts to support those that work for you. Help us to be faithful in prayer for these people and we just pray for all those in mission throughout the world. Um, even in the COVID environment, how much more complex things are, getting home even for, for furlough or for emergencies is extremely difficult. And we have a general feeling of isolation and we do pray for these people who essentially give up the comforts of home and give up their lives here to serve you abroad. And uh, oh, we just pray for, for safety. We're always praying for our own safety here. We pray more so for the safety of our workers who go abroad. They're often a target. They look different. They are different. Safety and travel, the roads and the networks are not as developed as we have here. And we just pray that your hand be upon them. Well, I thank you for the local youth work that is going on and just the, the group of young people that are in the time here that, that do have a faith and that want to meet and want to continue on. We thank you for Claudio and Tia, the two local workers, and just the impact that they have had and will continue to have on the young people. We just pray particularly for them, it's very difficult to like, stand among your peers. And we just pray that you would specifically bless them in their work. Just thank you for the, the giving of this church and the people in it. Help us to continue to be faithful to you. Amen. Thank you. Uh, we obviously, we heard from Frances a couple of weeks back. We've continued to support her. There, there are a few other things as well. Um, we, we haven't talked much about mission, um, and Janice is right, the, the money given has just kept rolling in, so do thank you for that. We, we're, we're going to have our sort of monthly mission updates again, and, and we'll look at some of these organisations in the months ahead in more detail. Um, so that's, a, that's just a very brief overview again this morning. Um, just to say about these five minute slots, um, uh, one of the things I'd love if anybody would have anything you'd like to take five minutes to talk about just talk to me about that um, things like book reviews or anything particular um, that uh, you you um, you know you think God um, has really laid on your heart that you want to share I'm more than happy to talk to you about that and, and try and develop these uh, five minute slots and, and get more and more of you involved in that as well even if you just want to, to lead us in prayer for something that's on your heart, that would be, that would be great. So you, uh, I'm, I'm encouraging you to be brave and bold and come and talk to me about those things. I know that's not normally the way you normally wait for me coming to approach you, but uh, come to me uh, if you would like to, to share anything like that. That would, be, that would be great. Right, we're going to do something with the, the kids again. So... Um, uh, first thing I want to do is just show you what um, we did last week. So let me uh, let me just try and. Could you grab one book, sorry, could you? And pull from one end there for me, for this. These are the things that. Andrew, you want to come and grab another end for me? Can you grab that end? Now I'll do the anchor in the middle. Hold on, that. So hold them nice and high so people can see. These are the. The posters we had them doing last week, um, uh, we were looking at. Uh, they're stretching my arms here, they're getting further and further up. Course, at, uh, these are these are the, the, the things we had them making last week with all their leaf decorations and uh, remembering at harvest that uh, God's love endures forever was what we were thinking about last Sunday morning. So Grace, thank you for that. We can set these back down again. Well, thank you. On the floor. Right, this morning, um, let me do this first. Um, 
going to show you another video about somebody in the, the Bible. Uh, so I'm wanting you to try and guess. So I'm going to give you clues and see who can be the first to guess who this is, okay? Someone who met Jesus. Saul. Saul. Not Saul. Any other ideas, any other guesses before I give you another clue? Somebody who met Jesus, no? Joseph? Not Joseph, no. Here's number, clue number two, right? Clue number two is he met Jesus in a place called Jericho. I'll give it away, no. No, need a third clue. Third clue, he was a tax collector. Any, uh, any ideas? Zacchaeus. Let's see if he's right. Stories of the Bible. Zacchaeus. This is Zacchaeus. Hey there. Who was a tax collector and very rich. Tax collectors were hated because many people thought they were liars and cheaters. Boo. <laughs> Zacchaeus lived in Jericho, and one day, Jesus was passing through Jericho. What's going on? Jesus is here! Woohoo! Zacchaeus wanted to see who Jesus was. <laughs> Excuse me. Hey, watch where you're going. But he was too short to see above the crowd. Ah, oh, that's it! So he ran ahead to a place where he knew Jesus would come. He climbed to a sycamore tree so he could see Jesus. When Jesus came to that place, he looked up and saw Zacchaeus in the tree. Oh, hey there, friend. Who? Me? Yeah, you. He said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down. I must stay at your house today. Oh, all right. Zacchaeus came down quickly. He was pleased to have Jesus in his house. All the people saw this and began to complain. Ugh. Look at the kind of man Jesus stays with. Zacchaeus is a sinner. But Zacchaeus said to Jesus, I will give half my money to the poor. If I have cheated anyone, I will pay that person back four times more. Jesus said, Salvation has come to this house today. What? This man truly belongs to the family of Abraham, the son of man came to find lost people and save them. Okay, so there's a quick introduction to Zacchaeus. Met Jesus up the tree. So um, two more questions for you. What changed in the inside of Zacchaeus and what changed in the outside of Zacchaeus? What changed in the inside and what changed in the outside? Can you think of anything that changed inside? No, you're all quiet this morning. You think of anything that changed outside? No. Any adults? What changed inside? His heart. His heart, yeah. Jesus, the boy Jesus finished the story is a salvation has come to this house today. Whatever spiritual thing has happened in Zacchaeus' heart, his heart has come alive to the reality of Jesus and God. His heart and life have been transformed. His, his soul has changed. That's something we can't even see what exactly happened in there, but we are told salvation has come. What, what changed outside? Remember what Zacchaeus said at the end? If I have cheated anybody, what am I going to do? Yes, Becky. Yeah, he said, if I've taken in, I'm going to give them back four times. Is that what you were going to say as well, Rebecca, was it? Yeah. Yeah. Imagine, whatever I've taken from people, I'm going to give them back even more. His whole his tax collectors, they were, they were notoriously bad people. They, they kept taking money. And now Zacchaeus, he just seems to want to, to give it away and give it back. So what changed in the inside meant that lots of things changed outside as well. And Zacchaeus, even his 
way he used his money changed. What he did was his money changed. If God changes our heart, he changes how we live. And changing how we live doesn't really matter that much unless God changes our heart. It has to be the two together. Sometimes people are religious, but God doesn't really have their heart. Sometimes God might have somebody's heart to some way or other, but they don't really change how they live. Neither of those are right. God says, I want to change your heart, and I want to change how you live. Those two have to go like two hands. Can't separate them. The inside and the out have to be the same. And Zacchaeus is a brilliant example of what that looks like. Right. Let's read our Bible passage this morning. It's only four verses, so I think we just read it together. This is the next part of the Sermon on the Mount. And um, this is what Jesus uh, says. Okay, so Matthew 6. Let's read it together. Be careful not to practice your righteousness in front of others to be seen by them. If you do, you will have no reward from your Father in heaven. So when you give to the needy, do not announce it with trumpets as the hypocrites do in the synagogues or on the streets to be honoured by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret. Then your Father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. Amen. And we thank God for his word. So let's do another hymn together, another song together, There is Redeemer. And then um, at the end of this hymn, the, the children could go up the back, they're packed.
We've been looking through what Jesus was teaching about life in the kingdom, life with God, the, the type of life that's going to, to be with him forever and ever, life that's breaking into the world. Now, and we've been looking at this righteous life. Jesus said, my people need to be righteous. They need actually to be perfect. Greater righteousness than the scribes and the Pharisees. What is righteous? Well, it's about being genuinely good people. Good in the sense of God good. Not just beyond right and wrong, you're not doing anything wrong. That's the scribes that got caught up in this law keeping, you know, when they just tried to keep the laws and not do anything wrong. But even as they were trying to do that, they were missing out on so many things and they were making so many th- mistakes and their, their hearts were not righteous. Righteousness beyond that of the scribes and the Pharisees, their inward union of mind and heart with the heavens. This is what Jesus is driving at. If you're one with me, you're one with the heavens. The heavens are coming in you and onto this earth. This is what life will be like forever. So when we are righteous, we're living at one with God, at one with his world and what he wants his world and his eternity to be. And the last few weeks we've been thinking about, you know, all this inward change. You know, going the extra mile, putting people first, loving your neighbours and your enemies. And now he moves on to the next section, which are about the outward religious acts that were customary and common. This is how people practised their religion. These were the pillars, the acts of righteousness. And there were three, there were, there were prayer, there was fasting, and there was giving alms to the poor. And these were three really, really centrally important things for, for righteous people to do. To give money to the poor and needy, to pray and to fast. And so Jesus comes and says, okay, we've, we've looked at righteousness in the heart. Now let's think about righteousness in these areas of, of your, your life. When you're being religious, are you being righteous? And what he's going to do is he's going to warn. Say, be careful here. Because even when you're being religious, you can be in danger. Actually, religion can be dangerous. Religion can be something that trips you up and leads you down all kinds of alleys and paths that actually can take you away from God rather than to God. So we're going to start this morning and look at, at almsgiving, giving to the poor. If you know us the trumpet, you've probably been waiting on me to reference it and uh, you've, some of you may have been waiting on me to pick it up and play it. That isn't going to happen. I'm not going to be blowing the trumpet this morning. I wouldn't have a clue where to start and I may well do myself an injury trying. But it's simply an illustration. And that's exactly what Jesus does. He uses trumpets and he uses it in illustration. He says, um, don't give like the Pharisees do. You know, they announce their giving with trumpets. In the streets, people, they pray through the streets with trumpets to, to show their, their great acts of giving and righteousness. We're not sure exactly what that looked like. There's no sort of historical evidence of what that actually did. Did they literally get somebody to blow the trumpet and go ahead of them to announce they had money to give away? Or was it the case maybe the, the temple had a time when, when a, a trumpet was announced, to, uh, the time of giving in the temple, and then all these righteous people would have walked the temple to sort of make their donations? Is that what Jesus is hinting at? Or was he simply using it as an illustration? You know, one of these... Because can you imagine people... Can you imagine walking through the dump, the diamond, on your way to church on a Sunday morning, somebody blowing the trumpet just to let people know you're coming to church? It seems really extreme, doesn't it? But that's what this is all about. Jesus said to these, don't be like the Pharisees and the scribes because actually they're religious acts. They're, they're giving and donating and all that they're doing to be seen to be religious. It's all a big show. It's all about being seen by people. They want to be noticed. 
They want their, their religiousness to be noticed. They want their goodness to be seen. They want to be recognized as generous, upright, God-filled people. And so look, here they come. And look at everybody applauding them and say, wow, look how generous these, look how faithful these guys are. Look how often they give. Of course, what Jesus is highlighting, he says, don't be like this. Because he's again going under the surface to the intent. Why are they doing that? Why are they giving money? What's the purpose? Do they want to help the poor? Is that what this is all about? They're so keen to actually help the poor. They're, they, you know, that, that's their number one priority. That's not the impression they're getting through it. So is it simply that they, they want to, to be God-honoring and they want to, to have God recognized and his name lifted up? Is that their focus? Is that what their intent is? Jesus said, that doesn't seem to hit the mark either. Their intent, the whole thing they're focused about is for them to be seen. To be recognized. See, the intent makes a huge difference. Intent is hugely important. You can have somebody doing the same things, but doing for two different reasons. One be good and one be bad. One be righteous and another be unrighteous. So it's very hard to judge what is righteous by just looking at the surface. Think of Zacchaeus there. We just looked at Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus announces publicly, I'm going to give away half a month. I'm going to give these people I've stolen from four times. Is that Jesus, would Jesus say to Zacchaeus? Oh, Zacchaeus, that's blowing your own trumpet, I bet. You've, made, you've stepped on, that's a, a black mark against. Of course not. Zacchaeus' only joy at that moment is that he is doing this for God. God has touched his life. And this is all not about him. This is about what God is doing and who God is. Intent. When we do our religious observance, when we come to church, when we give money, when we support mission, our intent has to be importantly looked and closely looked at because we can be hypocrites. Jesus is such a brilliant teacher. He, he uses illustrations and he uses stories and he uses examples and, and he takes words from his culture and he, he fills them with life and meaning. And this is one word that Jesus basically invents and uses in a whole new way, this word of idea of hypocrites. I've said before in the theatres, this is where this word come from. We know that there was a theatre built in Jesus' early life. It's possible even his father, the carpenter, and maybe even himself could have been involved in these kind of projects, building these theatres. In Zephyrus, there was a, a theatre and Jesus would have been aware of it, been part of the culture, these, these plays. And in these plays, the actors would have used different masks, played different roles and characters, depending on what mask they had. And Jesus then takes that idea and he says, that's a bit like what these guys are doing. They're, they're being hypocrites. They're, they're pretending to be this when really they're this. They're pretending by doing these things to, to be righteous and to be caring and to be God-filled people, when actually that's not their intent at all. And hypocrisy is one of these real dangers that religion brings. When we try and be religious, we can very quickly become hypocrites. Because what happens to these guys is their, their ego is bloated and their souls shrivel, Dallas Willard. Their ego is bloated. People are applauding them, they feel good about themselves, it looks as if they're wonderful, but actually their soul is being damaged. Their soul and their spiritual life is being diminished. Their religion is causing them harm. So let's think about how we should give, what Jesus says about giving, what Jesus says about the, the proper way to do these things. Because he does say, don't just throw out the baby with the bathwater. You know, he's not saying don't give. He's not saying don't do religion. He, what he's saying is, when you give, this should still be a, an important practice. 
Sometimes people get so fed up with religion and church life and all the hypocrites in church that simply say, I'm having nothing to do with that, you know, and, and I, I don't need that and, and I'll leave that aside, I can just follow Jesus on my own. That's not an option in the Bible. These things are really important. We have to be people who come together as his body and, and worship him together and do all these things together and give and be generous. Giving. When you give, showing mercy and piety. That, again, that's a word that's such a bad word in these days, isn't it? Somebody who's pious is, is seen as that snooty, religious, self-righteous kind of person. A gift of piety is, is simply, with the right intent, is, is an incredibly important thing to do. God teaches us to give. Paul says God loves a cheerful giver, 2 Corinthians 9. And he's talking about churches supporting one another, people supporting churches. God loves a cheerful giver. He wants us to be generous. He wants us to look after those who are in need. That's an important part that he's taught all through the, the Old Testament. He's taught them to tithe and to, to look after the poor and the needy and the widows, etc., etc., Jesus isn't throwing that out. He's saying, when you give. But when you give, it should be secret and quiet. It's not with trumpets and fanfare. It's not for publicity and recognition. Your right hand shouldn't know what your left hand is doing. Now, I've thought about this, and, and I can't think of any time when my right hand doesn't know what my left hand is doing. It's impossible, isn't it? You know, if it, Jesus is simply showing this as, you know, this is, should, should be so secret that it's as if you don't even know what you're doing yourself. You know, it's, it's that he's really emphasizing. When you do your good deeds, when you, when you do your religious and righteous acts, it's as if even you shouldn't be aware of what's happening. Again, we have to be careful here because this can mean sometimes that we, we get caught up in this and we think, oh, that means you know I should I should never publicly give to him, I should never put my, my name on a church record, you know, I shouldn't have, have anybody be able to see anything that I give. You know, Jesus isn't giving rules here, he's giving illustrations and examples. He's making points about our heart and our intent. Puritans had this idea that they talked about quite a lot in their writings about um, how you lived your life. You lived your life for an audience of one. The only person that you, you imagine watching and the only person that really mattered was God. So doing things to be seen by others just fades into the background because the only eyes that really matter are the eyes of God on you. And to live life with this idea of of everything I do, I simply am doing it for his eyes and his service. That's the ultimate idea of what all our religious observance should be about. I do this all for God. To be seen by him, for him to be seen by others. He's the only eyes that really matter. Psalm 139 is a, a lovely psalm, and this is a wee prayer just at the end of the psalm. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. Point out anything in me that offends you and lead me along the path everlasting. The idea that really bold, brave prayer to actually pray. God, would you examine my heart? Would you show me what my intent is would you would you lay bare what i do and why i do it test me point out anything in me jesus i think is wanting his listeners he wanting these these pharisees to really look and examine their hearts and say why do we do these things what is the thing that drives us what is our motivation are we being hypocrites? 
Are we tripping up, caring too much what other people think? Are we being hypocrites? So easy for me to be a hypocrite. So easy for you to be a hypocrite. Why do we do things? Why do you bring harvest gifts last Sunday? Why do you put money in your envelope? Why do you be here today? Why do you come to midweek meetings? Or Why do we do these things? Is it because we have to? Is it because we need to be seen by other people that we're doing this? Is it because you need to be seen by me to do this? Or is it because we genuinely want to love and serve God? Of course, you know that's the right answer, but let's examine our hearts and lives and check that's the right answer. So we have the danger of being hypocrites that we have to be wary of. Remember, Jesus is teaching us so that we, we become aware of what we can trip over easily. The second thing we can, we can get caught up in is the, the whole idea of, of just the reward. You know, we become obsessed with getting the reward. And maybe for the Pharisees, the reward was, you know, the applause of the people. And Jesus says, you've got it in full. You've had your applause and you've got your, your street cred and that's you finished. There's nothing else to come. But then he says this, your father who sees you in secret will reward you. And again, that's a wonderful thing to know that the God who, who sees us. But it's also can be a dangerous thing because if I think like this sometimes then what I'm tempted to think is well I'll do these things so that I can earn a bit of merit and a bit of favour and a bit of good. Maybe this is what will make me more righteous. You know, I'm, I, you know how, how will I make myself better? How will I make myself get to heaven? And this is a great danger with religion that actually our righteous deeds become these things that we think we're buying merit and favour with God and again that means it's all about me when I give it's about me trying to gain reward for me and of course it's a waste of time if you're in any doubt read Romans 3, 4, 5 where Paul talks about this righteousness you know righteous deeds no one has any righteous that we can actually offer righteousness comes through faith in God these deeds don't make us righteous. These don't, deeds don't store up for us righteousness. These deeds are simply the outworking of our faith, the outworking of the righteousness that we have in Christ. This isn't all about me, it's all about him. I do these things because I love him, because my heart is rejoicing and delighting like Zacchaeus. I want to be transformed and I want to be making amends. I want to be doing these things because Jesus has hold of my heart and this is who I am in him. Jesus is working his way towards this verse. Just as the way he worked up to be perfect as I am perfect, this next section is building up to towards this. Where he's reminding us, what do we look to? What is our intent? What are, where does our vision and our heart lie? He says, seek first the kingdom and his righteousness. Seek God. Seek to be with him and be like him. Seek his life that's where the focus everything that we do whether it be dipping into our pockets to give to the poor whether it be coming to church whether it be whatever righteous acts we have the only audience that matters is God and what he calls us to be and who he calls us to be and as we pursue him and his kingdom, then the rewards come, the joy of giving. That's the reward, the blessedness of sharing in his righteousness, the being filled with righteousness, that's the reward. 
That's the challenge. Love to be half the brilliant teacher that Jesus was. Where he could take simple illustrations, where he could take things that were happening in his culture and where he had cut through all the religious nonsense and get to people's hearts and say, examine, think. Don't just do these things. Think about why you do them and what they do to you and where they lead you. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for Jesus and his incredible practical wisdom for just how he he cuts through so much to the very heart of matters and and Father we thank you for just these words that we've been able to reflect on this morning. Father we pray that you'd help us to to examine and continually examine our lives before you and Father we pray that you would fill us with with your life and your kingdom with your love and your generosity. Father, forgive us for when we have maybe just been a bit hypocritical. Forgive us for when we've been tempted to look at the actions of others and make judgments. Father, we pray that you would help us to learn from the mistakes of the Pharisees and scribes. And above all else, to learn from the generous open heart of Jesus. And Father, as we come this morning, we thank you just that we've been able to gather together. And and we pray and continue to pray for the needs of one another. Father, we, we bring one another before you and we just thank you for one another. We thank you for the joy of being able to worship together. We want to continue to pray your blessing upon each one of us. We pray your blessing upon those not here this morning. For those who would like to be here but can't through ill health or old age or other things. Father, for those who who maybe have grown distant and cold. and Father, we just want to pray that your, your grace and your mercy would be upon us in these days. Father, we pray and continue to pray for the needs of our people and community, even as we we just read that letter from St. Vincent de Paul this morning. We know that many people are living hand to mouth. We know that many people are struggling, looking forward to to a winter where bills are going to increase and where life is probably going to be more difficult. Father, we just want to pray that in these days that you would draw people to life and to fullness of life. Father, we long to see people find answers for the the deep desires of their hearts. And we know that answer is Christ and him alone. So Father, we pray that maybe as we move into a difficult period, that you would just lead us to opportunities where we can show your love and speak your grace. Father, we continue to pray for our government, for our health service, for our our doctors and nurses here in this community and and our local hospitals. Father, we just want to pray that in these challenging days for them, that you would lay your hand upon them. Father, we thank you for all these things. And as your people, we now join to pray the prayer that you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore.